All right, what I'm gonna say might sound like an insult, but it's not, uh, it's not meant to be at least. In fact, this can be one of the entrepreneur's greatest superpowers. Entrepreneurs tend to be lazy. Entrepreneurs tend to be lazy. We want all the result with less effort. We want all the like freedom and benefit with less restrictions. Um, the funny thing is getting to what we want is often very indirect. Getting to that lazy space is often very, very indirect. And we end up with a lot of effort and work that we put into our desire to escape and have less effort and less work. And understanding this little lesson can be key to selling to entrepreneurs and business owners. So if you sell to business owners, for example, if you're a copywriter, a marketer, agency owner, etc., maybe a coach or consultant, make sure that you like and subscribe so you can get more nice little tips like this one. Let's dive into the full, uh, the full usefulness and utility of this lesson after the intro. These are the proven direct response, marketing, copywriting, and entrepreneurship success strategies you can use today to write your own ticket and create the life you want. I am Roy Furr, and this is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Now, here's today's breakthrough. All right, so before we talk about entrepreneurs being lazy and how that impacts how you might actually sell to them and what kind of offers they'd be more, most likely to buy, I want you to point you to the first link in the description, which is to the BTMS Insiders Marketing and Copywriting Course Library. So I've said it a bunch of times, BTMS Insiders, it's like Netflix for copywriting and marketing training, meaning it's a sub streaming subscription. You pay one low monthly fee, you get instant streaming access to everything. But a lot of people don't realize exactly what that means. So the first link in the description is to the all courses page at BTMS Insiders. And you can go there and you can see everything that you get access to through BTMS Insiders. Again, first link in the description, just check it out, browse it, see if there's anything that jumps off the page at you. All right, so all of this, this observation about entrepreneurs being lazy leads to a common mistake when selling to entrepreneurs. And that is selling entrepreneurs on an idea and offer some service or whatever that requires more work from them. If what you were trying to sell to me is something that is going to require me to do more work, I'm going to say no. So for example, there's the uh, <laughs> being a copywriter and an entrepreneur, being a well-known copywriter and an entrepreneur. I have people coming to me all the time that are like, hey, uh, mentor me. I will work for you and you get the profits from me working for you. I'm sorry. Mentoring you is a lot of work. There's a reason that when I take people on these days, I charge a very significant sum, close to five figures, to be a mentee of mine for a pretty short period of time because it is a lot of work. So you're making me an offer that like, okay, we'll split project fees for work that you do for me if I mentor you. I am already very busy. I don't want the work of finding you the client work, getting you the client work, being your copy chief through the client work, doing all of that, doing all that extra work. I don't want more work. I want less work. I stay busy enough with my business as it is. And so trying to sell me something that requires more work from me as an entrepreneur is a non-starter. And it's one of the biggest mistakes that happens with pretty much anybody trying to make any kind of offer to businesses and business owners. Uh, and, and it can even be like a growing your business offer. You might think, oh, if I'm offering to grow their business, they're gonna have more money. It's gonna be great, right? But oftentimes an entrepreneur has a thousand ideas about how they could grow their business and as far as they've thought of them, those thousand ideas require a significant amount of work that they just have not found the time to invest yet. They have trouble keeping up with the business that they already have. And so if the business becomes bigger, 
they're also concerned that it's going to become a bigger hassle and headache. And like this leads to what entrepreneurs really want most and what they end up paying big money for. And that is freedom, freedom. Entrepreneurs got into business. They became entrepreneurs in the first place in pursuit of freedom, freedom of time and control of their schedule, right? So I don't want somebody else dictating my time and my schedule. Well, now that entrepreneur works 60 to 80 hours a week and their business does kind of control their schedule, their clients do kind of control their schedule, their customers do control their schedule, their staff does control their schedule, all in pursuit of escaping the boss controlling their schedule. They want freedom of place and location. They want to be able to get away, go work from anywhere, whatever. But now they're stuck at their office, their business, their 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 place where they've set up their business. And oftentimes entrepreneurs are taking less vacations, they're going to less places than their employees. They're feeling very stuck in the place that they're at. They want freedom from from a boss and from a job, right? Like they 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 became an entrepreneur. They started their own business because they weren't employable. They didn't want to work for somebody else, right? But now they're the bad boss and the employee and the business is two full-time jobs, right? And so all of this, like they created the business. Okay, there's, there's lots of motivations to create the business and you might have something that you think could make the world a better place and all of that, right? But this pull towards entrepreneurship, one big element of it is typically this pull to freedom, this desire for freedom. And in pursuit of the freedom, again, the thing that I said in the beginning was that, you know, we end up with a lot of effort and work and getting to what we desire is often very indirect. And so as we pursue this freedom, we end up with less of it. And that's what entrepreneurs want. They want more freedom. They don't want less freedom. They want more freedom. It's just they've ended up in a place where somehow their pursuit of more freedom has led to less. And so that leads to what business owners pay a premium for. They pay a premium for escape, for escape from work, for escape from responsibility, for escape from burdens. You know, so there's a thousand different responsibilities and burdens that somebody takes on when they become an entrepreneur. And oftentimes successful entrepreneurship um, is a result of your ability to take on responsibility and burdens. If you are willing to handle the responsibility and burdens, well, that means that you can grow the business and you work through it and you know you deal with one, you manage one response, you you manage one responsibility, one burden, and then you make it something that you have to manage less, and then another one comes and you make it something you have to manage less, and you, another one comes and you make it, and there's this process of creating a business and systems, etc that manage the responsibilities and burdens for you, but there's always more responsibility, always more burdens. And the entrepreneur wants escape. And they're always looking for what's next, what's out there, what's new, not better version of this, because this, this is what is bringing them all of that lack of freedom, all of the burden, all of the responsibility. And so if you're selling results in business, it can be really, helpful to think about whatever you do, how does it make that entrepreneur, that business owner, how does it make it so they can get and get out of their business? Maybe it's for a short period of time. Maybe it's for an extended period. How do, is it, is it building the business that they can sell in two years and less or less that they can, that they can scale and, 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 you know, retire early? Is it installing the systems that, um, that, are going to allow them to work only four days a week and take uh, four weeks of vacation a year instead of the six days a week that they work now and zero weeks of vacation per year, right? Is it, um, is it something where you are taking a giant project off of their plate? One of my biggest client projects this year uh, was something that the client themselves did the most recent time through and they just could not do the work again this time. They just wanted escape from that, right? They just wanted escape from the work of doing that. And they were willing to pay a pretty good premium for that. And so even offering them this temporary reprieve, this relief from overwork, right, can be huge 
So like for me, one, one big thing uh, is related to taxes. When you have a business, you have to file personal taxes and you have to file business taxes. And when I launched my business, like I was, I was doing my personal tax filing, I was doing my business tax filing, I was doing all of that. And I am not predisposed to flying through that work and feeling great about it. In fact, I'm predisposed to kind of the opposite, to putting off that work, to not getting it done, to struggling with it, to feeling terrible, and to just this overwhelming sense of negativity and burden and, and anxiety and shame and all of that tied to the responsibility to file taxes every year. So my decision to hire someone to take care of taxes, it wasn't really about saving money on taxes. Yeah, that's a great benefit of hiring an accountant who knows what the heck that they're doing, like a tax preparer, not just, not just like whatever person TurboTax puts at the like retail location, right? Um, or whatever company, right? Not, not that, but somebody who is a legitimate accountant who understands things like corporation structure and the decision-making that would go about that and how that would impact not just tax burden, but any potential legal burden and anything down the road and people who, who are going to uh, adopt certain strategies and filing, et cetera, right? Like all of that, having somebody on your side that's gonna save you money for taxes, it's a great reason to hire a tax preparer. But for me, the important part for me is the relief from the emotional burden of that responsibility. If I don't have to think about it and they just say, you owe this much or you're getting this much in return and sign here and you're good to go, man, that's exactly what I wanted. That is the escape from one responsibility, one burden of entrepreneurship. And that's an easy purchase for me to make. And when you think about that, when you think about entrepreneurs, wanting escape because they, you know, going back to the very beginning, I said entrepreneurs are lazy. We build entire systems so we don't have to do work. We solve problems that require a lot of work so that they require less work. The actual process of solving the problem is a ton of work, right? But we're aiming for that solution that leads to less work. There's all sorts of things that the entrepreneur's laziness, the desire to not work for somebody else, the creating this entire business around that, right? Building up a team so you don't have to do the work, so all these team members have this opportunity and they do work and they serve clients on a bigger basis, all of that. All of that is a reflection of an entrepreneur inherently wanting to reduce their total workload, but somehow also being willing to do more work in that process. And so if you think about this, like you're always selling to the entrepreneur who is taking on more work, but wanting to reduce their workload. And if you can help them with that, well, you'll find it a lot easier to get the check out of them. Um, and, and it will be, you know, just much more beneficial for you and whatever offer you are trying to make. And if you want to learn more about marketing, copywriting, I guess in that sense, I should sell you something that involves you doing a lot less work, but I, I suppose what I've done here is I have uh, minimized your need to chase potential learning of marketing and copywriting all over the internet through a thousand gurus. And instead I've compiled my integrated perspectives and observations and systems and approaches to marketing and selling and copywriting into one single membership where you log in and you say, what is relevant to me here? And you can browse all those courses even without an account, without logging in, you can just check them all out. The first link in the description takes you to the BTMS Insiders Marketing and Copywriting Course Library. Just check it out. See what it's like and remember that you can pay one low monthly fee for the all access pass and get instant streaming access to any and all of it to binge or to just have available when you need it. I'm Roy Furrow, this Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, if you are a marketer, copywriter, or entrepreneur who is involved in creating marketing. Uh, yeah, uh, I do this every day. You'll get updates here. And if you subscribe by email, you'll get updates there. And I will catch you again in the next episode. I'll see you soon. Thank you once again for tuning in to this daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Remember, check out the links with this episode for even more value. Now make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way you can to keep this show going and growing and delivering daily value to you. I'll catch you soon for your next big breakthrough.